Hi, I'm Andy, pastor of First Baptist Church, and welcome to our Wednesday evening check-in. Over the last several weeks, we've been looking at Paul's letter to the Philippian church, and that is known as his letter of joy. And um, as we've talked about it, tonight, tonight we'll look in chapter 4. We've taken significant verses from chapters 1, 2, and 3, and tonight we're going to conclude with, with chapter 4. And as we begin, I want to share a song with you that we've sung before. It's called, Who You Say I Am. The first time I remember hearing this was in the cross-country movie, The Overcomer. I believe that's what it's called. It was popular about a year ago, and a, a young girl was competing in cross-country, and she was beginning to understand God, God's love for her, and she did some study in the scriptures and realized that her value was because God loved her, and God made her, and God had his hand upon her in her life. Um, her value wasn't earned. It wasn't deserved. It wasn't something that she made herself. It's, um, it's innate because God was her creator, and God loved her so much. And so I remember that song playing in the background when she made this realization, and I want to share it with you. And so let's look one more time at the letter Paul wrote to the Philippian church, a church that was so very dear to him and so near to him. Um, I just want to remind you of a few verses in chapter 1. We're going to focus mainly on chapter 4, but let me just kind of set the, the context here. Paul was in prison, but this is known as his letter of joy. He's full of thanksgiving. And, and really, the way I read it, a couple things contribute to this. One is he's thankful for these people who have been partners of his. 
these people who have been friends, these people that he has ministered alongside, that he has ministered to. Um, but also, he reminds them in every chapter, uh, he reminds them, keep your eyes fixed upon Jesus. He is the one who um, gives you your value. He is the one who sets your priorities. He is the one um, who gives you your identity. And so in all things, you can give thanks because Jesus is the one who loves you and has created you. He said in that first chapter, I thank my God every time that I remember you. Writing this from jail, you know, I thank my God every time I remember you, constantly praying with joy in every one of my prayers for all of you because of your sharing in the gospel from the first day until now. And then maybe the theme verse, a theme verse of this book is, I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work among you will bring it to completion by the day of Jesus Christ. This will be the last time that I lead the Wednesday evening check-in as your pastor. Sunday will be my last Sunday in the pulpit. And I just want to tell you, it has been a great joy in my life to serve among you. I am so thankful for the life that we have shared. You have welcomed me and our family. You have loved us. We have ministered beside one another, and I am thankful down to the core for these moments. Never for one day have I regretted accepting the call to be your pastor. It has brought great joy, and I, I told one of my sons that 999 days out of a 1,000, I'm excited to get up and do what I'm called to do. There's one day every once in a while, <laughs> but a lot of that's because I, I, I think I've begun to recognize how good how very good God is, but also how clearly it is that God has called me to this place. And, and I'm so thankful for the time that we have spent here in chapter two. And so I just wanted to say that. Sunday, I'm going to preach a message from Philippians. And basically, for the last couple of weeks, I've been reading through this book over and over again, reflecting on some of these verses, this 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 epistle, this letter of joy. And, and I hope that Sunday it will be a meaningful message uh, for you. I hope it will be encouraging. Um, I'm confident that God has a lot to say to all of us uh, through this powerful letter that Paul wrote. You remember in chapter 2... Um, Paul said, let the same mind be in you that's in Christ Jesus. And, and he reminded them of Jesus' humility and his service um, and his obedience to God. In chapter 3, he said, I press on toward the prize, toward the goal, toward this life that God has called me to. I have to forget what lies behind. And the only way we do that is through God's gift, <laughs> God's gift of forgiveness. I have to strain forward toward what is next and what lies ahead. And then here in chapter 4, let me read a couple of verses, beginning with um, verse 4. Paul says, in, in closing, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Paul says, let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Those are such powerful words. Um, I said perhaps a theme is I'm confident that the one who's began a good work in you is going to be faithful to complete it. That might be a theme of this book. Every chapter of this book has a, a verse that could be a theme verse. This one certainly is true. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. How are we supposed to rejoice when when life throws a curveball or when it's a cloudy day or when a thing that had been a blessing is no longer there or when someone we love is is lost, uh, when we when when we lose someone that we care about, when the tension mounts. Paul says rejoice in the Lord. Remember God's goodness. Remember God's blessings. He says, let your gentleness be known to everyone. It's not a sign of weakness to be gentle. It's a sign of strength to be gentle. Um, the Lord is near. And here, don't worry about anything, but in everything with prayer and supplication, let your requests be made known to God. I've told you before that I 
for much of my life considered myself and would be a worrier. Once in the first church that I pastored full time, I was going through a spell where every night I would wake up in the middle of the night worried about stuff, stuff I couldn't control, situations that sometimes didn't even affect me, situations that I had no say-so in. I would just kind of worry, I would worry, I would worry. So I told a close pastor friend about this, and he said, Andy, something within you is not resting. Something's not resting. And um, I began to recognize that. And so what I started doing is I, I, I read verses like these, and I was reminded, don't worry, but lift everything up to God. Make your requests known to Him. Make your supplication to Him. Be thankful to Him. And so what I began to do is I would, when I would wake up in the middle of the night, rather than fretting, rather than worrying, rather than saying, gosh, it's 2 o'clock. If I can fall asleep by 2.30, I can still sleep four more hours. You know, doing the math. Maybe you've done this. If I could just go to sleep by 3, it's three more hours after that till my alarm goes off. You know, you maybe you've done it. Um, I would take that time and say, okay, Lord, what would you want me to think about? And I would begin to lift up these requests to God. And I used it. I, I began to think about time awake at night as a chance to pray, a chance to reflect, a chance to be quiet, a chance to be thankful. And in a matter of time, um, that restlessness went away. My friend said, Andy, something within you is not resting. And so I began to just say, Lord, help me to rest. Lord, I give this to you. Um, what kind of worry what kind of anxiety do you need to give to God right now in your life? Um, really, the only way to not worry is to know that things are going to be okay. Um, to know that God is in control. God has His hand on this world and on history and on your lives and on my life and on the lives of our family members. And so he said, um, reflect on God, make your request to Him, and God will grant you his peace. Um, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. My hope is that you will know God's peace. There is going to be a time of transition in this church, in, in, in your life, in our lives. Um, but my prayer is that God will guide us and that God will touch us with his mercy and his grace and his peace. This week I went to see a dear friend, and I was basically saying goodbye as her pastor, and I said, can I pray for you? And I prayed with her. And then um, before I left, she said, you've prayed for me many, many times. I pray for you, but I haven't prayed for you with you here. Can I just pray for you? And so she prayed for me, and that was such a moving thing. We are to lift one another up in prayer and ask for God's peace to be available and ready in each of our lives. And so I want to close with a word of prayer. Lord, I lift up this congregation to you, and I ask for your mercy and your grace and your peace to be upon them. My heart is full of joy as I think about the places where we have walked and the time that we have spent. I ask, Lord, that you would bless them and guide them. I ask, Lord, that you would speak through them your words. I pray, Lord, that you would bless this community and this world through this congregation. I thank you for them and love each one. And I lift them up to you. And I do this in Jesus' name. Amen.